Tough Africa Global presents the first Eco Smart City in the Gambia, the Tough City, located between Gunjur and Sifo. It is 30 minutes away from the Banjul International Airport. At Tough City, you will be able to live, work, play, and shop in a healthy multi-purpose community. This vibrant urban environment will meet your everyday needs with commercial, business, recreational and other complementary services to increase the value of your home. With up to 5,000 units of affordable homes on a 500 hectare land, Tap City will be twice the size of Banjul. Prime location, stunning properties and amazing discount of 20% for the first 50 buyers. Make an appointment today to secure your property. For more information, please call plus 220-776233 or plus 220-376-2333 or you can send an email to info at toughafricaglobal.com. Better still, visit our office at Madiwa Mall, Brewfoot Gardens Estate. Tough City, a green and smart city accessible to all. Welcome back to the Tough Hub. My name is Maria Makuli and we are really excited to be back on this very important show. I'm here with the main host himself, Mr. Mustafa Njai, well known as Mr. Tough, uh, also youth man. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. Njai. How are you? Thank you so much, Mariama. And uh, again, uh, it's a pleasure hosting the show with you. Um, it's always good to balance um, yes. from two directions yes yeah, one sure. gender wise we have a female and a male presenting it mm -hmm. and then from age wise also we have a youth man and a young lady you know yes. hosting it but trust me he's more of the youth man here <laughs> like the energy mr Jai has is not even matched with mine at all thank <laughs> you very much thanks for the great thank compliments <laughs> today we're here um uh, with um uh, somebody very young if you have been following the tough hop you will notice that most of the um, experts that we've been bringing into the hall are mainly uh, men and women of a bit of an age and a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we're, we're going, we have a guest, very knowledgeable in his own field, yes. but relatively very young. So I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Hassan Jallo. And Mr. Hassan Jallo will tell you who he is and give you a summary of your bio and also the business that you are in. Mr. Jallo, welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's really an honor to be here. I remember being very, very pleased uh, when I received the invitation. Um, so my name is Hassan. I grew up in rural Gambia. I got access to the internet in 2006 um, and was hooked since. I run a leading software engineering company in the Gambia. We're on a mission to bring uh, meaningful technological innovations to the masses to improve the quality of life on the African continent. And um, we have a diverse team of engineers and designers that uh, build a variety of uh, cross-functional and cross-functional teams and cross-platform software solutions. So yeah. what's the name of your company? Again? Asutec. Asutec. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, you deal with a lot of technology. Um, I think it's excellent yeah. because, um, uh, let's face it, I mean, most of us are now addicted to our phones. Mm -hmm. uh, you fly uh, in a plane mm -hmm. and um, the moment you land, the first thing you do is to stick your phone on. Yeah, exactly. And then actually you hear throughout the, the, the plane, uh, tit, tit, thing, thing. noise coming out, you know. <laughs> because people, people are as if they were locked up in a prison. Yeah. And that just shows you how addicted we are. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, TikTok is very addictive. I've never seen an application this addictive. Yeah. And there's a reason for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it didn't happen by accident. It was designed to be so. Yeah, Because, exactly. I mean, the messaging on TikTok is quite short. Maximum three minutes. Yeah. Some are only 15 seconds. And now, obviously, because it's so hilarious, some of the things that they, they, they post there, mm -hmm. you just get hooked, you just watch. Content is yeah. Rich. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's fine. But anyway, look, so others are making money out of it. Yeah. But um, I am a bit old school, and I want to just uh, you know throw up something for uh, um, maybe a debate. Mm -hmm. 
Because these days we think that we should apply technology for efficiency. Mm -hmm. But I come from a different school of thought mm -hmm. that Africa needs employment. Because mm -hmm. technology for me mm -hmm. reduces employment. Because okay. what probably, you know, a dozen people were supposed to do mm -hmm. and earn a living, mm -hmm. you can get one person to do it probably over, over a very short time. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we are now seeing even robots doing things doing that what human beings should have done. Mm -hmm. But in my own um, um, analysis, mm -hmm. um, especially for, for Africa, for mm -hmm. a country like the Gambia, mm -hmm. that needs so much employment, mm -hmm. if we follow the advanced world, mm -hmm. the West, mm -hmm. in applying technology in most of the things that we do, mm -hmm. aren't we not, again, you know, growing unemployment? I, people do come to me most of the time, or I attend conferences where um, people ask, techno, you know, they, they, they advocate for technology in construction. Mm -hmm. I have seen, you know, some people trying to advocate for 3D printing in construction. And I've seen the machine, mm -hmm. where you put the machine and they tell you, okay, you know, you can build this house mm -hmm. in one day. <laughs> the machine is all set up. But remember, yes, what happens? You put in this machine, it is building the house in one day, but ordinarily there are 25 people who were working there and uh, they were not only working there to earn a living, but they were also putting food on the table for maybe each of them four or five more people. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I seriously believe in, that we need to watch the way technology is applied in the third world. Mm -hmm. because. The advanced world has gone through different stages of life. Mm -hmm. They didn't just get up one day from the industrial revolution and then technology came. Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't industrialized. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm an advocate that Africa needs to industrialize. Mm -hmm. I'm an advocate that um, Africa needs to invest in agriculture because we still import what we eat. Yeah. So I will put more attention mm -hmm. on agriculture and yes, use technology positively mm -hmm. in multiplying what we grow, but not forgetting that we should not send people home because they are being replaced of technology, shabby equipment or so. What's yeah. your take on it? Oh, wow. This is going to be an interesting discussion. <laughs> yes, yes. Here you are. As I said, I'm a bit old school and I want to not defend what all, I actually. believe in. No, no, no. You know, you are a, you are a, you are a tech kid, whiz kid, you know, everything is technology, technology, technology. Like you always tell me about the software that you guys have developed. That, um, uh, you know, a signature, a robotic, uh, a robotic signature being done. Yeah. yeah. Ordinarily, what the robots were doing would have been done by so many people. Right. So this is my argument. No, I, I, I Maybe understand. in the West, I don't know, I don't live there, mm -hmm. but I am an advocate of employment generation opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we need to balance out technology against employment creation. Excellent. So this, this, is, this is a uh, very common topic, actually. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely, I think, so, if I wanted to build a piece of hardware, right? If, let's say I wanted to make a, this paper, right? Um, I'm probably gonna need the raw material, I need to source it. I uh, need to find the, 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 the talent, uh, the workforce to do it. Electricity, you need to pay attention to that. You need good logistics. So maybe a pack would cost I don't know, that's not correct, but the pack could cost, let's say, $5 to make. And then I sell it for maybe like $8. $8. Somebody will just take a photo of this and send it to somebody in China via WeChat. It will cost them maybe 50 cents to make. Mm -hmm. And they will come, they will sell it. You'll struggle to compete. And the reason is that um, they have excellent logistics. They have a highly... Uh, well-trained workforce mm -hmm. that is very hardworking and determined. They have excellent logistics. They have influence around the world. They have capital. So it's impossible to compete. So I think, and for us as a country, Gambia, 
we are so small, we have such a small population, that if we wanted to, let's say, compete in manufacturing or industrial liaison, it would be extremely hard compared to other countries. So somebody, you would try to do everything right, check off all the boxes, somebody will just import from Indonesia or China, and they will sell it for half your cost. Mm. And then electricity will be an issue. The port will be an issue for exports. But where I think is technology, what I think is that technology is an equalizer. Okay? If you wanted to build an app, what you need is a computer and internet. No matter where you are in the world, if you have gigabit internet, I have megabit internet. The same YouTube you will watch is the same YouTube I'll watch, regardless of how fast your internet is. If my internet is decent enough, we can watch the same thing. We can watch the same tutorials, we can read the same books, we can install the same software. As a matter of fact, we could, at this point, we can have exactly the same computers or even better, right? So we can compete in ways where the raw material is very minimal, right? And you know, this is where we can, I think, you know, I, I always say this a lot, I grew up in rural Gambia, right? Um, when I was growing up, there was no electricity in my, in my village. And I was just lucky in 2006, I had access to the internet. I can promise you, there's so many brilliant people that I, have, that I, have grew, I grew up with who would have done extremely well if they had accesses. Today I was having a chat with a lady, and uh, she works at Netflix as a software engineer. She's a Gambian, and we're seeing how we can work together uh, to get more ladies in, 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 in STEM, right? So I think we are, as a population, we are undereducated relative to our ability, mm. right? We, at this point, the only, if I wanted to manufacture, oh, I forgot to mention, even if I manufacture this at five dollars, the quality might still be less, mm. right? Mm. And that quality that's imported mm. could be more. Mm. But with software, we can deliver the same standard, right? We can deliver because the knowledge is there, free pretty much. The knowledge is there, free pretty much. And we, we should just defy mediocrity and look at what the rest of the world is doing and want to deliver exactly that, at least, or more. Mm. So, I th and you know, when we talk about technology taking jobs, this is a conversation that's very old. Mm -hmm. Like imagine before, you know, our, maybe our great-grandparents, or maybe your great-grandparents, when they went for Hajj, mm -hmm. it was either via ship yeah. or they walked. They even walked, yeah. 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 You know, I'm pretty sure when planes came in, people were saying, oh my God, all the ship companies, they're going to lose their business. Yeah. You know, if one thing we have proven as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, as human beings, is resilience. Mm. Mm. We have had this conversation multiple times. This mm. is going to take away jobs. This is going to mm. take away jobs. Mm. And yet we ad adjust and nobody wants to go back. Mm. Right? Mm. And imagine people would say, OK. So therefore, I think if an industry is disrupted by technology, it's their responsibility to in re-innovate. That's one. And mm. two, our population is undereducated relative to their ability. So people can be able to uplift their skills. So the, work, the workforce is here. We have a lot of, you know, you, I hear you say this all the time, mm. and hence Gambia Lafayette and Dia Queer. Yeah. You know, the youth, sometimes yeah. you meet the youth and you, you feel like, oh, that gives you hope, right? Mm. Yeah. Imagine all those people, how hungry they are. Like the ladies that you're working with at the Tough City. I'm pretty sure every single day that you interact with them, their skill set is just going up, mm. right? So the capacity and the ability and the potential is there. And that's really where we should, um, where we should invest and re-educate an entire population to do more. So we, wanna want, we want more. And we don't want to follow the path of uh, like the developed world or the developing world, like uh, industrialization. And we want to have a hybrid. Mm. So we can't just follow them one to one. We want a hybrid where, yes, some industrialization. I mean, you know, yes, we have manufacturing in 3D printing, but it's not particularly economically viable mm. at this particular time, especially for our use case. So in terms of building a house, I do not subscribe to, oh yes, we need to build a 3D printer to build a house, right? But it's more like, um, I think those parts we can still do, mm. but we just need to teach people with the skills um, to deliver better than they are doing and be more efficient. And we want to, and you know, what, one of the interesting things is, every equipment we import is designed by somebody 
who sat someplace in some lab and imagine how we are supposed to use it. Why aren't we making our own equipment to solve our own problems? You know, this is, this is where, this is what the time the youth, I think, these are the kinds of skills they should be learning. Like how, for example, I always think about this, the gate, like if, a lot, in a lot of households, the gates, you know, the, that thing, the, yeah, yeah. it's always broken. Bolt, yeah. yeah, it's always broken. Yeah. For the past 10 years, the gates have been exactly the same. Yeah. Why can't we be doing research? Okay, this is how we've known gates to be. This is the problem we're having with gates. Why can't somebody just research a simple mechanism and try it out? And we can apply this in every single aspect of our lives. Why does somebody have to uh, design equipment for us? Why can't we do our own research and give them a spec and say, why don't you design the equipment like this? Because this is how it works and this is how it will be more impactful. We bring it down and get it to work. So, so really, this is, this, is, this is my belief. And I think that humans will always catch up. We'll yeah. have to. I, th I think where the difference is, and I think I, I like this debate, and. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you are looking more on on design, mm -hmm. on 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 the technology part of it, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the smart part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I am looking more on the hard skills. Mm -hmm. And let's take your argument about the bolt on that gate. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the reason why it's failing? Is it failing because the design is not right, or somebody has not improved on the design, mm -hmm. or is it failing because somebody has is not skilled enough to weld it properly? So mm -hmm. this is where my argument comes in. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I am an advocate mm -hmm. for training in hard skills. Mm -hmm. Take for example, the cars mm -hmm. that we see now that are running around in this country. Mm -hmm. Quite a number of them, mm -hmm. you know, has now advanced in the technology. Mm -hmm. There's not, the old um, mechanism doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these cars has got mm -hmm. a lot of electronics in it. Mm -hmm. So my point really mm -hmm. is that we need to train mechanics. And training, you start from from the very bottom. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to write good English, mm -hmm. you start by, you know, memorizing the alphabet. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to start from A, B, C to Z. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so that's, that's my point. We don't have to agree. No, I agree with you, actually. Yeah, but, 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 but yeah. my point really, mm -hmm. for a third world country like the Gambia, mm -hmm. we need to invest a lot into hard skills. Mm -hmm. Because yes, we can have an Asan Jalo mm -hmm. with, uh, 10, 25 people more in a software company mm -hmm. who will do all this brilliant work mm -hmm. and compete the Microsoft and everything. Mm -hmm. But the masses, mm -hmm. that's my concern. Mm -hmm. And it is my strong belief mm -hmm. that a country like the Gambia mm -hmm. needs to invest a lot on hard skills. You can improve probably or design a hammer that once it knocks a nail once, mm -hmm. it will drive that nail home. Mm -hmm. And not to use the common hammer of the, hitting mm -hmm. it six times. Mm -hmm. That's, I don't have any problem with that. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see mm -hmm. that you train a carpenter mm -hmm. to be able to put that nail there and drive it home. Mm -hmm. So I'm an advocate of hard skills, mm -hmm. but yes, blending it with technology. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need to find a common ground where we meet, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. marry technology mm -hmm. and hard skills. No, I 100% agree. The but thing is, the good no, thing is it's not... I mean, I'm just wondering, because I know um, in as much as technology is going to advance someday, mm -hmm. uh, taking up most of the jobs, I don't see it, or I don't see these robots or machines that they are creating to do some, some, some kind of jobs that humans exactly. are doing. Exactly. It wouldn't be done up to expectation or satisfaction, you know. Um, at the end of the day, you must have, a, just like the washing machine, sometimes it doesn't do most of the washing that you want it to do to, that, to, to your satisfaction. You know, you wash it and then you're not satisfied, you go back and then use your hand and rewash again. So uh, in as much as innovation is going to take place, it's going to happen, I think uh, we will still have to adjust in accepting that some people need to still keep their jobs. But yeah, that's an interesting debate. We hope someday Mr. Jai will expand it on a bigger platform and see how the conversation would be and how people would also accept it. But um, finally, uh, what suggestions or recommendations do you have for real estate players when it comes to technology? Right. Um, I think my suggestion is to, first is to understand what is it that their problems are? Mm -hmm. What is their biggest headache? Mm -hmm. you know, I think that, again, you know, we can look at the technology and see how we can apply it. But it's just 
to better understand what are their major challenges. Mm -hmm. Because they would, even if they can't really pinpoint this, but working with people in that space to better understand what keeps you up at night. What is there that if it was just better, right? Mm -hmm. And um, some tech can be used to make it better, right? And I think that's really a starting point. And in some cases, it's not like, you know, like I was uh, telling Uncle Tab, it's really, we, it's not even a contradiction, it's a contradistinction, because both of these things should be together. You need to have this and you need to have that, and together, you know, that's how you build resilient economies. But it's more like, this is the problem that we have. The technology is not going to be a 100% solution, but a hybrid of the technology plus Everything else that needs to be done, working together, perfect. Yeah. You know, so th that is how we should think about this. Mm -hmm. So I think if a real estate, if, 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 if for example, I had a uh, conversation with a real estate company and they say, okay, this is my problem. Maybe the problem is sales, okay? How do we increase sales by a particular margin, okay? There's a lot of solutions to that, right? Um, in terms of, um, ROI, like how, do you, how much do you invest in, in marketing and as opposed to results. Okay, problem is how do I managing projects? How do I make sure like there's a system and it executes? I do not have to be hands on on all the little details, but I just want to pay attention to certain data points, either successes or certain or reversals. So you get notified on a success or you get notified on a reversal. So you can zero in on that and resolve it fast. So that way, you don't have to be too involved in the low-level details. Or it could be um, sourcing products. Like, um, how do you make sure that you have a system that can automatically tell your supplier to bring you uh, goods and services? It's a good, good, good product that you need, material. Like, where you don't even have to call them, but the supplier can know they are going to run out of this before you even tell them. And this is where we have applications of machine learning and artificial intelligence where mm. you have used predictive analysis models to be able to predict, okay, when you're going to need this. And sometimes you don't even need that. It's just something, just a simple system. Mm. So I think in summary, it comes down to what it is that they're facing and what is the major challenges that they're having. Mm. And then you brainstorm. It's not like, it's not a Boolean, it's not binary one or zero, but it's more like, okay, here's the pro set of problems. You think through it and we think, okay, if we build this, if we build that, that coupled with uh, strengthening the institution in a certain way or, or uh, streamlining your processes in a certain way, that with the technology, you'll have maximum impact. You test it out, it works great, fantastic. There are some challenges, you revise and see how you can make it better. Thank you. If, if you ask me, let me come in there because I'm in real estate. And yeah. you know, if that question was asked, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what is it that I want done mm -hmm. in terms of technology in mm -hmm. the development that we do, mm -hmm. it's key technology. Because it works at home. In my house, I mean, oh. I'm, I'm living, you know, on a top floor, and we have a main entrance, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a, a key combination. We mm -hmm. use um, numbers to open it up, mm -hmm. and um, we have never had any issue of like key being lost, mm -hmm. oh. you know. But if we have a common door, mm -hmm. I mean, let's think about it. Mm -hmm. If you have a common door in a household of about five or so more, more people, mm -hmm. you always have an issue of who's got keys to it. Mm -hmm. Even if you issue out five Seven keys, keys yeah. mm -hmm. one day somebody will lose the keys somewhere. Yeah. And then you now have to share four keys to five people. Mm -hmm. And as time goes on, it will go on until you have only one key left. Mm -hmm. Then you start, you know, trying to cut a blank key. Now, from experience, our, gr our ground uh, door, the main door, we have a combination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have never had issues anytime we have, we have, we can change the combination too. And it uses batteries. So, so, so when there's no power, we will still access it. Mm -hmm. When the battery is low, it will just show the sign and you will let it change it. Mm -hmm. But the danger is that if somebody else who is not a resident knows the number, mm -hmm. then he, he's got easy access. Mm -hmm. That's a way, as you just said, there are pros and cons to it. Mm -hmm. But for us, it works well. Mm -hmm. If you go up, mm -hmm. you know, all the other doors, you have to have a key. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see all my doors, mm -hmm. you know, with a combination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to carry any bunch of key anymore. Yeah. 
Because to get into my room, I have to go through three doors. And at times, if I come home and my wife is not there, I have to first go through the ground floor door, then the main apartment door, and then our bedroom. So imagine if it was only fingerprint. You know, so I just, anywhere, anytime I get to a door, I put my fingerprint and get through. So I think that will make a difference. And uh, it will also save all these keys being done because you have to manufacture, you know, all these keys. Mm -hmm. And most of the time you lose a lot of keys. Yeah. Yeah. In development, and I have seen this, mm -hmm. because people are not very disciplined at the construction stage. Mm -hmm. Because remember, it's carpenters who will hang the doors. Mm -hmm. And in each door, you have these days an average of between four to five keys. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, before you hand over the key to the client, mm -hmm. they lose the keys. Oh, no. <laughs> or the client doesn't trust the keys that you have given him. Because if it's a total of four keys, say, for example, whilst constructing or fixing the key, you lose one. Once it's lost, the client will not trust to have that lock anymore because he, don't, he or she doesn't know who's got the key. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, if you ask me a question as a, as a, as a developer, as mm -hmm. somebody in this big business big time, mm -hmm. I think what I would love to see mm -hmm. is to have a technology mm -hmm. where you do fingerprints mm -hmm. on all the doors and we eliminate the keys. Home for thought. So thank you, Mr. Njai. Thank mm -hmm. you, Hassan, uh, Mr. Hassan Jala. It was great having you on the Tap Hub today, mm -hmm. sharing your experience with us. And yes, Mr. Njai, uh, this was a very interesting conversation. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and uh, Mariama. Mm -hmm. And um, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, mm -hmm. um, which is Mustafa Njai Dash Taf. Or follow us on all our social media handles. Mm -hmm. Until we come again your way, I am Mustafa Njai, aka Youthman, <laughs> and my beautiful co-host Maria Makoli. Thank Hassan, you. thanks for coming. Thank my you. pleasure. Thank you. Tough Africa Global presents the first Eco Smart City in the Gambia, the Tough City, located between Gunjur and Sifo. It is 30 minutes away from the Banjul International Airport. At Taf City, you will be able to live, work, play and shop in a healthy multi-purpose community. This vibrant urban environment will meet your everyday needs with commercial, business, recreational and other complementary services to increase the value of your home. With up to 5,000 units of affordable homes on a 500 hectare land, Tap City will be twice the size of Banjul. Prime location, stunning properties and amazing discount of 20% for the first 50 buyers. Make an appointment today to secure your property. For more information, please call plus 220-776233 or plus 220-376-2333 or you can send an email to info at tafafricaglobal.com Better still, visit our office at Madiwa Mall, Brewfoot Gardens Estate. Taf City, a green and smart city, accessible to all. <laughs>